you'd think that what with gas prices going through the roof, some people might think twice about buying or even driving an SUV. Not Margaret Wente. As readers of the Globe and Mail know, Ms. Wente loves her SUV. In a column on Tuesday, she did more than just defend her love affair with her gas guzzler. She celebrated it. And that drove a lot of people around the bend. Joining me now to discuss this more is Margaret Wente of the Globe and Mail and Jesse Hirsch, a technology activist. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Margaret, for people who missed your column, I have to uh, give you a little uh, excerpt here. You talk about your dainty little SUV, and you say you know your car dependency is bad. It pollutes the air, undermines our cash-strapped transit system, contributes to wasteful land use and ugly urban sprawl, destroys the fabrics of communities, promotes obesity, and it costs you 50 bucks to fill. So why are you so in love with it still? Because cars are freedom, and uh, I love my SUV because I'm high up on the road. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, you know I think we've demonized car culture, and uh, whenever you say you like to drive an SUV, people jump all over you. They think you're evil and wicked and sinful. But you just go out on the road and look at the choices that people are making, and every, a lot of people are making the same choice I am. And you know I don't think that's such a bad thing. It's akin to being a smoker almost these days, isn't it? Almost. But there are a lot of us out there. Now, I'll tell you, you touched a nerve because yesterday, and again today, I might add, people wrote back calling you selfish, short-sighted, self-interested, narrow-minded, and elitist. Did the reaction surprise you? <laughs> no, because people are almost religious about this subject. And, you know, all you have to do is say, I love my SUV, and they'll come out in droves and attack you. I, as if I'm supposed to feel guilty? for, you know, driving a legal product, uh, which is the car of, of my choice? I don't think so. But I was trying to make another point, too, and that is that it's going to take an awful lot more than gasoline at one dollar a liter to get people detached from their cars. Because uh, cars are not only convenient, but for a lot of people they're absolutely necessary. Jesse, I'm going to bring you in here. How did you react when you read Margaret's column? I, I think I reacted quite similar to most of the sort of uh, irate readers who felt that in fact this was not so much an exercise of freedom but rather the voice of a bully saying I'm the big person on the road get out of my way it doesn't matter if I pollute the air and so you know there's this notion of people having the right to drive SUVs well there's also responsibilities that come with rights and one of those responsibilities is not always using your SUV when perhaps public transit provides another alternative or using other types of transportation such as going for a walk or carpooling or taking a bicycle in that we really have to address greenhouse gas emissions and global warming as a very serious threat not only to our health but our, our future as, as a human society. Peggy, he's calling you a bully. Well, then I suggest that he, um, he should be happy that gas prices are going up because that's ultimately what's going to regulate consumer behavior. It's not nagging, it's the market, you know, and if you have to pay four bucks for gas, then maybe people will think again. But, you know, public transit really is not an option for a lot of us. And I think this whole myth that public transit is, gonna, is the solution to all our problems is just fake. Even though you confessed you live on a streetcar line and you I do couldn't take the I do live on a TTC line. to work. I do. I could. But, you know, I have to make six stops on the way home. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what Jesse's marital status is. Do you have kids? You're married? I'm married. You're, you're married. Okay. Well, you know, once you have kids, I mean, how are you going to pick up the kids from daycare, go shopping, buy the groceries, get the cat litter on the TTC or your bike? It's just not practical. Jesse, are people siding with you? I mean, it's over a buck a liter now, and it doesn't seem to dramatically have affected our habits. Well, again, I think the price has to go a lot higher for people to actually be impacted. But there are a lot of people in my generation, Mar Margaret earlier referred to it as the aware generation, who recognize that we have to make sacrifices if we want to grow past the age of 60. And certainly, you know, the TTC may not be perfect. Public transit may not be the solution, but it's an alternative. And we need to support it in the same way that we need to support democracy, the same way that we need to support Canadian culture, that these are intangible assets that really determine the health of our society. Now, there's this notion of the revolt of the elites, that there are a privileged class of society who are so disgusted by the sweaty, dirty world that is public transit, as an example, so they cocoon themselves 
themselves inside of their SUV as a way of insulating themselves from the real world. Is that what you believe? Well, I take public transit to be part of my community, to be part of people who may be ethnically diverse, socioeconomically diverse, and in engaging these people on the streetcar and chatting with them about what it's like to live in Toronto, I feel that makes me a better person, and I seek that community experience, whereas I feel others try to evade it and try to avoid people who may not be as rich as they are or as educated as they are, and I think that's a mistake. Margaret? Well, I applaud Jesse's community spirit, but number one, um, if you want economic growth in this country, and if you want economic growth around Toronto, look what's happening around Toronto. Look at, look at where all the newcomers are settling, 100,000 a year. They're not settling in the inner city. They're se settling in the outer exurbs. Half of the commuting now is done not between downtown and out of town. It's done between suburb and suburb. There's no public transit system in the world that can accommodate those people. Besides, what's the matter with autonomy and mobility? I don't see what's so wrong about that. I don't think that destroys community values. In fact, it's the common choice of almost everybody in the middle class once they can afford it. Jesse, last word. Again, rights have to be linked to responsibility. And if everybody withdraws from the public, if everybody withdraws from community, yes, they will have autonomy and freedom, but we won't have society. We need public transit in the exurbs. We need to have the same type of excellent public service that you would have in London and in New York, in Mississauga, in Peel region. But of course, I mean, not everybody has access to acceptable public transportation, as was pointed out in a letter to the editor in the Globe today, and suggesting that most people think the driving is the better way, Jesse. We need our politicians, and we need to force our politicians to change that. This is a political issue. Funding into alternative forms of transportation has to happen. So what, Otherwise, should we ban we SUVs? Have. Not so much ban SUVs, but provide alternatives. There's no way to force people not to choose. You have to give them a sweeter, sexier alternative. And to do that is a very political decision that, unfortunately, the politicians of today are unwilling to do. Mark, I think it's, I think it's um, you have to allow people the personal choice. And the convenience of a car is unbeatable. I think public transit is just, just can't compete. Well, I don't know what it says, but SUV sales are down, down 13% in the first quarter, with the biggest SUVs plunging the most. So, who knows? Thank you very much, both of you. Bye-bye. Bye. We'd like to get your opinion on all of this. What do you think of people who drive SUVs? Or perhaps you drive one yourself. Let us know. You can email us at cbcnewsmorning at cbc.ca.